Hey Carb Geeks, so I'm, uh, well, <laughs> it's uh, late November and in the US it's Thanksgiving next week and uh, for my sins I'm actually off to England to present at the Winter Carp Show and what I thought I'd do is give you a preview of what I'm doing uh, with my presentation which is called Cracking the Amino Acid Code. So it's kind of an angler, an, <laughs> an angler, an angler friendly version of uh, you know, the amino acid theory and how that's applied to baits. So, uh, as you can see, there I am on the title there. And uh, so without further ado, let's uh, let's talk through the slides. All right, so I'm going to kind of uh, have my screen over here, so I'll kind of read through as we go, okay? So, you know, obviously, yeah, there's the website and uh, the email if you want to get in touch. Uh, you know, we pride ourselves on good customer service and we love, honestly, talking to anglers. So if you've got a question, Feel free to drop us a line. Okay, let's take a peek. So, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> Good question, right? What are we going to talk about? So, obviously, some very fundamental questions first. Um, what's an amino acid, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, because we use amino acids to attract and stimulate fish to feed. What, what are they, right? Okay, and then, you know, a very important thing, a little bit sciencey, a little bit... Uh, physiology based right is exactly how do fish detect amino acids because if you can understand and crack that you really understand how to apply amino acids so we'll talk about how fish actually physically with their olfactory organs uh, detect amino acids and then you know once we've figured that one out how can we then kind of use the theory to add amino acids to our baits and actually catch a bunch of fish <laughs> right so that's the trick and then at the end um, questions and answers now that's what I do <laughs> in the presentation and if you happen to be at the winter carp show feel free to ask questions at the end and we'll also you know I'll, I'll do an updated version of this hopefully at the uh, the big one uh, in 2025 anyway plenty of time for questions and answers I do have a few standard ones people ask and I'll provide answers for those and as a kind of a bonus feature just for the video here I've got a few kind of um, comments on hydros right so people are always thinking about hydros and natural amino blends like you might get from chop worm for example uh, talk a little bit about that okay so let's have a quick peek so what's an amino acid <laughs> great question so fundamentally amino acids are the building blocks of proteins there are 20 or so natural amino acids you've heard of lysine and valine and things like that so there are 20 amino acids okay those form chains so you get these long chains of amino acids which then fall back on themselves sometimes to make uniquely structured proteins okay so fundamentally think of amino acids as legos and the structures they make as proteins okay now <clears throat> a little bit of a busy slide there but what i want you to take away from this is that there are 20 natural amino acids so 20 building blocks for proteins and they come in four varieties okay and that's key for later because there are actually four receptor sites which correspond to the four amino acid families okay all right so let's take a look at the next page <laughs> oh there it is so my hero <laughs> shocker <laughs> is kevin maddox right and uh as a teenager i read uh Kevin Maddox Carp Fever in 1984 and was actually blown away by the amino acid study he did. And that's actually a direct copy from his book. Okay, so he saw excellent reaction, lysine, valine. Okay, and then he literally ranked everything else, all the amino acids in order. And that, that uh, order of reactivity, that order of potency, has held up through numerous since academic studies. So true scientific research is actually confirm Kevin's findings from the 80s so that was a fantastic piece of work and uh, awesome right and what we were able to do is that literally build on Kevin's work and expand it okay so let's take a quick peek right so there remember I mentioned the four families of amino acids turns out that amino acids in the basic which for example lysine and in the neutral example valine those are the two main families that cause the most stimulation in carp okay so important details basic and neutral amino acids are the most potent so they're great choices for fish feeding stimulants I'm not going to get into the details but if you read carp fever he goes into a little bit more detail uh, the relative potencies of those actually cancel when they're mixed together and that's the kind of fundamental kind of underpinning of what we call the BVRM the 
bivalent receptor model, right? If you want to learn more about that, I'll flash up uh, the webpage, aminotech.com. I've got lots of kind of sciencey type papers up there if you're really interested in the details. But take home message, basic and neutral amino acids. There they are, color coded in the table. Valine and lysine are the best, but honestly, you can pick any of the purple and blue ones to make a, a carb attractant. Okay, moving on. So a bit more detail. <laughs> <laughs> Weird picture, right? So all living organisms, and these particular living organisms are really good at this, okay? So we eat protein, and if we work out, yeah, we break down our proteins, our muscles, and then we rebuild them. So those building blocks to rebuild larger muscles are actually amino acids. This is why bodybuilders, and you know, honestly, I get all my amino acids from my tests from health food shops where these guys get their, you know, their milkshakes, right? So... All living, all living organisms are constantly breaking down their proteins into the amino acids and then replacing them. So there's a big turnover, okay? And if you do this kind of carefully, you can actually build muscle, right? Okay, but any, anyway, you don't have to build muscle to exchange your amino acids. It's happening all the time, okay? Now, here's, for those of my age, right? If you grew up in the 80s, this makes sense, right? So <laughs> there's a classic picture from Only Fools and Horses, and uh, Trigger says, you know, he works for the council sweeping the, the roads, and he says, you know, I've had this, let's, let's get it. So I've maintained this broom for 20 years. It's had the same broom for 20 years. It's, <laughs> this whole broom's had 17 heads and 14 handles. So <laughs> it's not really the same broom, right? And that's exactly how the human body is, right? It turns out that, you know, as shown by Trigg there, right, broom heads regenerate every 0.7 years and handles every 0.8 when you do the math, right? The human body actually turns over in terms of its cells every seven years, right? So the person you are seven years ago is not the person you are today. You're a completely new person, right? So all those proteins have been broken down and excreted and replaced, right? And here's the key thing. Every organism is doing this, right? And if we look at this picture here, it's kind of a weird one, right? So we, as humans, obviously, are breaking down our proteins to make aminos. And we leave them everywhere we go in our fingerprints, in our sweat, essentially, right? So this picture is... Uh, an inhydrin, that's the, the chemical they use. It's an inhydrin fingerprint and inhydrin stains amino acids, right? So everywhere you go, everything you touch, you leave amino acids on it, right? Similar with fish, they excrete amino acids all the time, which is almost like, a, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a tell, right? So it's like fish can detect amino acids. They can literally tell where fish are from their excretions and they're doing it all the time involuntarily. You can't hide, <laughs> right? You're always giving away amino acids. All right, so this is why we call it the primeval switch. This is why fish and other organisms have a very simple yes, no food here signal based on amino acids, right? Which is an ancient kind of, this is food receptor. Okay, so <clears throat> now <laughs> this will get a bit gory in parts, right? So this is just pictures off the internet, not me doing things to fish, right? So obviously um, amino acids are detected through the fish's nose or nares into its olfactory system, right? So it's kind of interesting if you look at the fish's kind of nares there, they kind of have a, obviously an in hole and an out hole and the, the out hole's kind of shielded so it kind of deflects the water into the into the nares which is kind of neat okay <clears throat> now <laughs> that's, that's the gory picture so if you're able to dissect the fish and kind of peel back the skin there right you would see kind of tubes and i'll kind of uh, point them out with the mouse here so these tubes are called olfactory tracts right they're basically tubes that then connect to these kind of bulbs here and these bulbs are called the olfactory bulbs. <laughs> it's kind of a descriptive name. Okay. It's interesting, behind the olfactory bulbs is the fish's brain, which is only slightly larger. So the olfactory apparatus of a fish is almost as big as its entire brain. Mm, that's, uh, that's important, right? And then if we kind of like went inside an olfactory bulb, we'd see it would be a bit like a pomegranate. There'd be like a larger kind of volume, which you can see in the second picture. And then inside that larger volume that pomegranate are the seeds right and those seeds are called olfactory rosettes and here's one in the third picture now the olfactory rosette is kind of um, black and white there because that's a picture taken with an electron microscope so we're getting super small at this point okay and if you think about um, stomach tissue for example the walls are kind of wavy aren't they like the tines of a comb to increase surface area that's exactly what's happening oh, pardon me, exactly what's happening 
down here you can see the kind of the folds of skin in the rosette now those folds of skin are called the olfactory epithelium which is kind of like nose skin <laughs> essentially right and it's literally on that olfactory epithelium where we find the amino acid receptors okay and it's kind of interesting so we've zoomed in and imagine us to be sitting on the surface of one of these kind of folds of skin on the surface of the folds of skin it's almost like a rock down at the beach right we kind of see these anemones like in a rock pool right so there are these anemone type structures you can see them there in the fourth picture and they are actually nerve cells all right so they're kind of the stalks if you like of a nerve cell and then emerging from that center hub is some fingers right look like fingers of an anemone and they're actually called cilia and it's on those tiny little fingers and you look at the scale there one micrometer right so one millionth of a meter is the size scale there so on those tiny little fingers that's where we find the amino acid receptors okay so it's super small scale and that's about as far as you can go with a microscope anything smaller is just a guess to be honest okay so next slide now there they are so <laughs> there's a zoom in on the on the kind of the cilia at the nerve cell and i've got a little bit of an animation to show you in a little bit but let's go and take a kind of a quick look so we're kind of getting into a stylized version so there's the kind of the trunk of the cilia and it turns out that the amino acid receptors which are the black hexagons in this picture are in clusters okay and so clustered on these cilia fingers are the amino acid receptors when amino acids bind to these receptors it essentially creates a food here signal so it's all about binding amino acids from the pond water to these cilia's receptors okay now let's take a look at that cool little uh, animation so whether or not you get optimal stimulation depends entirely on the number of receptors or I should say more accurately the fraction of receptors occupied right and it's a bit like uh, Goldilocks and the three bears the porridge is either too cold too hot or just right and we've actually nailed down those regions pretty well so let's take a peek right so we'll see a little animation here zooming in there's the cilia there's the receptor set that's a low concentration of amino acids and we get a, a two, what we call a too cold signal right so it's less than 50 percent of the receptors are occupied we don't get a good response there is mild stimulation at best it's not what you want okay if i increase it just a little bit we get a just right coverage now it's shown in medical literature that um, drugs particularly work in what's called the therapeutic range and we think this holds here too and that therapeutic range of optimal kind of effect is between 50 and 85 percent occupancy and that's exactly what, what we got here we believe firmly and we kind of have shown this by experiment that you know if you're between 50 and 85 percent coverage you get a just right optimal stimulation so the fish are actively searching for food not going crazy okay too hot <laughs> believe it or not you can overstimulate fish okay and then if that happens the bites become very quick and you can't hit them it's got the uh, the classic jacuzzi situation right so what you don't want is what well it's a bad word but the technical term is overdose right so an overdose of coffee won't kill you it just make you kind of like tweaked right so a similar situation with amino acids if fish overstimulate on amino acids they simply just drift off they become uninterested in feeding so you want to avoid that even though it's you know safe it's not optimal for getting a bite you want to stay in the goldilocks zone we call it in the just right kind of coverage okay now <laughs> obviously if you have a source of amino acids like you sprinkle your bait with something right so sort of powdered amino acid of some sort as you throw that bait into the water you start at zero and then the amino acid concentration or amount of amino acids in the water grows right and so clearly that as that concentration grows so does the coverage of the sites and unfortunately you very quickly go through that range of too cold just right to too hot okay which has been my opinion um the kind of the achilles heel of amino acids for like decades essentially right so <clears throat> there's our too cold just to remind you right 
that's not going to give you enough stimulation you increase the amino acid just a little bit you get just right okay and then it's very very easy to go then with a little bit too much to the overdose condition and that's what usually happens it's usually under or over because it's very hard to maintain that just right coverage and there it is that's the major major problem for amino acids okay so I'll just read it right so you want that between 50 and 85 percent coverage but this, in real terms, in terms of how much stuff you put in the water, is an extremely narrow range. So you need a very tiny amount, so it's all the way down there, right? And then that narrow kind of range within that tiny concentration is very narrow, right? So the actual numbers are right there. So I've used milligrams and a more convenient unit, grains, <laughs> right? So if you think of a grain of salt, right? So you're looking at like 0 0.077 grains of amino acid per minute flux so you got like literally a tenth of a grain of whichever amino acid you like coming out of your bait to get the just right coverage a little bit too much you're too hot doesn't work a little bit under too cold doesn't work so essentially this is almost almost impossible to do with pure amino acids or single amino acids right and that as i mentioned has been the problem with amino acids all through the years i mean we see they work in the tank and then we go out and try and use them and sometimes you catch sometimes you don't it's very inconsistent really what's happening is you're you're not getting it just right in terms of coverage so that really is the take-home message how on earth do you maintain the just right coverage and spoiler <laughs> that's literally been 20 years of research right so i've been studying this problem for 20 years and i'm happy to report that <laughs> we figured it out eventually right so let's talk about how we figured it out so how can we get that 85 to 50 50 to 85 percent coverage mission impossible well not really let me show you how it works impulse that's the that's the product locks in the perfect 50 to 85 percent by including a fixed fraction of blocking molecules right so what we do is if we wanted a 50 50 coverage of blockers which don't do anything they just get in the way and active amino acids would just mix equal amounts and throw it in there if you think about it now it doesn't matter how much you throw in there half the sites will be occupied with blocker half the sites with amino acids and you're going to be optimally stimulated all the time and that's the genius of impulse it's now as the key says it's not about concentration anymore you can use as much as you want past a certain minimum threshold as long as you throw enough in there you will get the right ratio because it's a ratio not a concentration hopefully that makes sense right that if you've kind of caught onto that kind of key concept now of ratio not concentration it's ratio dependent not concentration dependent and that really 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 opens up the range of concentrations by about three orders of magnitude right so up to a thousand times different in concentration from that single amino acid we saw earlier that's so hard to uh, get just right all right so there we go i told you my secrets right so <laughs> have i got proof yes <laughs> okay so um it's taken a while actually but trying to get this to work in a tank is actually pretty hard because of the small volume and as you can see from the slide there the top right hand corner <laughs> it's kind of I have three research tanks which I you know I work with I'm a chemistry professor and my students and I have a you know research class where we study this stuff and we have three three tanks there and uh, they're set up in a particular way which I'll kind of explain as we go through but before we kind of start to talk about the details I'll start the video going right so there are the fish and that's optimal stimulation so that's impulse just tested in the lab there okay that's what you want you don't want the fish going crazy you want them actively searching and if you notice they're, they're mouthing the gravel right around the uh, the dosa there which i'll explain in a moment okay now this is not too different than kevin maddox's earliest work right so kevin maddox literally had the same setup a little simpler he just poured amino acid solutions into a tank and diffused them through the gravel now that was genius because if you think about it he's starting at zero right so even though he may have put too much amino acid in there it took a long time to seep through the gravel so he slowly ramped through too cold just right too hot so he was able to see response from fish and the quicker he saw the response the more potent the amino acid so very clever experiment kevin there brilliant right so ours is just a kind of a slight upgrade on that <clears throat> so <laughs> we have 
a doser. So the doser is literally a kid's sippy cup with uh, a hose going into the bottom of it with a you know an air stone from an aquarium to make it diffuse nicely topped up with gravel and we know the volume of that is 150 milliliters okay so we then dribble in around 200 milliliters of amino acid solution through the tube and we dye it sometimes just to see what it's doing but after we've got the tank set up we no need to dye it so that's kind of one where we did dye it an early experiment but it works just the same if it's dyed or not so it's not about the dye <laughs> that's important right and as you can see <clears throat> it's kind of acting a bit like a chimney, right? So we're getting a, a constant stream of amino acids into the doser, which then kind of bubble up and then tumble over the edge, right? And I've got it there, <laughs> you Harry Potter fans, right? Godric's Hollow, right? So I've purposely put a little indentation in the gravel right next to the doser where the amino acids that fall out will collect like a puddle. And as you can see, the fish are hitting uh, the amino acid kind of puddle there in, in Godric's Hollow. So that's kind of how you set up a tank, right? So very important, tank setup is <laughs> tricky because of the small volume, but it is doable and these results are now consistent, right? So we get consistent results with this all the time. So we're able to do some pretty clever experiments. All right, so there's our lab proof, right? What about other proof? Well, <clears throat> back in the day, oh, 2016, maybe earlier? I can't remember the, the exact year, but it was some time ago, um, earlier kind of prototypes of Impulse, we sent out to Sparshot College for independent testing. Uh, and guess what? And <laughs> you can look at the thesis at the Aminotech website. It came back that they were outfishing normal baits, otherwise identical normal baits, just the one was fished with those with impulse one wasn't by more than two to one so you can you know scientifically proven to better than double catch rates and that's from Sparshot and there are actually two studies uh, one done by Tom and one done by Ollie so guys if you're listening <laughs> good job <laughs> right. that, that was a while ago now I know you both got careers and probably families by now but uh, great job guys <laughs> anyway so that was Tom and Ollie back in the day uh, a bit more bang up to date literally last year um, as we really like nailed the formula and it was super consistent every time the results actually got better and we sent it out for testing so <laughs> Luke and Ian from uh, Carpology took it out and conclusively showed and you can kind of search them on YouTube just search the Carpology uh, YouTube impulse they actually got a 13 to 1 catch rate ratio it's kind of like insane <laughs> Luke, was, Luke was so tired at the end he could hardly talk, <laughs> which I found the most amusing part of the whole video. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so he, uh, you know, he, uh, Luke and Ian had a, had a fantastic day uh, just uh, bagging up on it. And, uh, you know, so that's, that was using a, obviously a big carp technique, two rods each, the usual thing. They actually fish with PVA bags. And then we sent it out to the awesome Mark Sawyer, great guy if you ever talk to Mark, he's awesome. And, um, sent out for Mark for a match fishing style test. So he did a similar kind of thing, but with two kind of match method feeders and he managed an 11 to two catch rate differential. So, you know, spa shot, carpology and angling times got some spectacular results and they were filmed live as Mark calls it uh, jeopardy, right? So he just turns up and fishes and people were coming up and watching him and stuff. There were no retakes. It was all as it happens. And uh, those are the results. So pretty conclusive. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, check them out. There's the Immunotech website if you want to take a look at it. And there's the Biosol Space website. Okay. Now, <clears throat> common questions. <laughs> First one. It's more of a statement, really, because it comes from questions. Impulse needs to get to the bottom. So you need to get to the bottom and create that Godric's hollow type effect, right? So you need the amino acids to leak out the bait, saturate the bottom a little bit, okay? So we use products that are either liquid or gel or paste. Those are our three types of product. The liquid is used with absorbent things like ground bait and pellets. The gel is used with hard things like boilies, for example. So it's, you know, horses for courses. You know, you don't want to dip the boy in a liquid because it will just wash off. You want to kind of have a kind of sticky gel on it. Whereas a pellet where you can spray it and it soaks in a little bit. Yeah, liquid's great, right? So horses for courses, obviously no spod mix, <laughs> right? Unless you, you're putting in pre-dosed baits into a spod mix. All right. You got to get that minimum concentration. So if you remember the pictures, you need to get past the too cold, right? So as long as you put in enough don't overdo it because you know there is you know a limit to this 
don't overdo it but if you get to that minimum you will start to get more bites all right <laughs> classic question right now i don't want to give my <laughs> angling kind of colleagues my business kind of colleagues of a hard time but you see um on certain <laughs> videos anglers uh dosing uh, boilies for, for like months at a time and getting them to soak all the way in and right so yeah and that's nice right and they cut it open and it's kind of kind of soaked all the way through this kind of liquidy material right so the, the the liquid soak soaks all the way into boilies and you can soak them for as long as you want and that's fantastic right but then that's a problem for us right so this doesn't work for impulse and there's an analogy so if you look at the picture there that's a Norwegian fjord and I've actually been to the fjords, right? And when you're on the boat, someone always says, how deep's the fjord? And it's hundreds, sometimes thousands of feet deep. And the person on the boat always gives you the same answer. And the, the answer is, the fjord is about as deep as the mountains are tall. And that's a great picture there. So that kind of applies to my analogy of soaking boilies because however long it takes to soak a boilie all the way through that's how long it takes for it to leak out <laughs> which won't get you to threshold which will not work for impulse so with impulse it needs to be a quick release right so it's absorbent baits with liquid or hard baits with the gel which kind of dissolves quickly off the surface once it's on the bottom okay so there is a time component right there is a time component okay last one Amino acids are foods, <laughs> right? Okay, so amino acids will be consumed by microorganisms. Okay, so if you're using impulse pu impulse dose materials, use it as quick as you can, okay? They're okay in the bowl because it's too concentrated to kind of have microbial action. It's a bit like honey in that respect. Uh, but once you kind of dilute it, yeah, the microbes can start to eat it. So try and use, if you do use impulse gel or paste, you know, try and use it as quick as you can after applying it. We, you know, it depends on the bait, but anywhere between 12 and 48 hours is kind of uh, how much time you got after you've applied it to your bait. So it's a little bit of a different strategy. So you might want to kind of like put the gel on right before you cast in for a boily, or if you're preparing a spod mix, you know, don't do it all at once, do it in parts, right? And so, you know, maybe make a couple of kilos spotted out use that and then make another couple of kilo fresh before you go out again. You don't want a lot of bait just sitting around, particularly in the summer. Okay. All right. Where can you learn more? <laughs> Obviously, you know, there's the product range and there's the QR code and there's the website. We have a pretty decent website. Um, you can learn all about the products and how to apply them. Uh, there okay. If you want to send us an email, we've recently put together a, a really nice user guide, which we'll be sending out actually has hard copies with orders and you know if you happen to be at the show we'll be giving them out for free okay so you know there's the liquid the paste and the gel again horses of courses absorbent materials ground bait pellets the liquid more harder materials are actually great for squirting into pva bags is the is the gel and then finally you know barbell anglers love it right the paste wrap is actually pretty good for wrapping baits really good okay all right Last thing, <laughs> yeah, I'm a nerd. So long and thanks for all the fish, right? But <laughs> so for real. Um, obviously, this is for the show. So if you happen to be at the show, yes, feel free to stop by the booth, pick up a book, and have a chat, right? And obviously, if you got any more questions, I'm happy to answer them at that time. Okay. Now, <laughs> that's where if you're at the show, we'd finish and we'd get into a question and answer obviously this is kind of a one-way deal you guys can't really ask me questions although if you want to put something in the comments yes i will get back to you right if you want to send me an email through the site info at biosourcebase.com yes i will get back to you but i will address one thing which i mentioned at the start and that is hydros okay so people think hydros are the be all and end all of attraction and honestly they are not <laughs> don't want to burst your bubble okay they have limited stimulatory effect okay what are hydros well so you take a protein and you basically digest it and that breaks it into all the individual amino acids but the amino acids aren't there in equal amounts so the profile as they call it gives you the kind of the percents of each amino acid individually and they may go as high as like seven or eight percent maybe as low as half a percent it depends on the food right so certain foods have more basic amino acids for example particularly meats and vegetables tend to have more neutral amino acids, such as soy or something. Okay, and you know, here's a 
a little comparison there. So, as we mentioned, each hydro has a particularly unique composition. So valine, as you can see, is really rich in tuna, lysine, more so. <laughs> and you just look at the numbers. Okay, there you go. All right. So each, hy each hydro is unique. Now here's the problem, and this is actually, you can take a trip back to 1984, okay? This is why I was so blown away by carp fever. It wasn't just because of the results, but what Kevin actually said about combining amino acids. And there's his statement, right? So one conclusive finding was that those acids which were best on their own, guess what, lysine and valine, the two top tier aminos, proved to be ineffective when used in combination. That's fundamental, okay? That's the foundation of the bivalent receptor model which we've developed. Bottom line is, you mix the two best ones together and you think, oh, that'd be awesome. They cancel. They cancel, they don't work together. Kind of hard to get your head around that, isn't it, right? But that's how nature is. And what essentially any hydro will do, because the amino acids are in very kind of similar ratios or similar amounts in the ratio, they'll cancel quite quickly. So you only ever get a very slight stimulation because of a slight difference in the amounts so <laughs> hydros aren't good because of the observation that Kevin saw now my first um, project as a professor at the college when I started my research was to check that out right and here it is that graph tells you everything you need to know <laughs> so V is valine and K is lysine and if you look Right around here, a 2.25 to 1 valine lysine solution cancels exactly. Okay, so Kevin mentioned it, he saw it kind of with empirical observation, he was just observing fish behavior. We actually did an experiment. Yes, we were observing the fish, but we kind of recorded them and looked at them kind of after the fact, so we weren't biased in any way. And repeatable experiments. So you can see there, we call that the St. Olaf study. But yeah, you get a cancellation when you mix the two most potents together, as confirmed. Okay. All right, that's that. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, hope to see you at the show. Any questions, feel free to drop me a line in the comments or info at biosourcebase.com. See you next time.